Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. Our headquarters are here in Fort Lauderdale Church, House of Prayer, Healing Rooms, Prophecy Rooms. We are pressing in for revival in South Florida and beyond. Check it out, AwakeningHouseOfPrayer.com. Today's broadcast is sponsored by Ignite's Lighthouses, gathering companies of profits in cities around the world under the covering, the alignment, the protection of the Ignite network. Many people have nowhere in their community to find other prophetic people. We can try to connect you. Ignite's Lighthouse, you can find that at ignitenow.org. And I'm the author, of course, of our devotional mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still small voice of God. But we're continuing to read from victory decrees. I keep trying to shift back in, and sometimes I do, but I love today's topic, today's entry. The enemy attack will bounce off of you. <laughs> I love this. The enemy attack will bounce off of you. And here's what I heard the Lord say. That which the enemy used to try to destroy you will rebound off you and land back in his dark camp. And there will be confusion, but not for you, says the Lord. I'm bringing you out of that place of confusion and into a place of knowing, into a place of confidence that you hear my voice, into a place of understanding what my will is, says God. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That needs to be your confession, says God. Look at me and look again and again and again until the image of my goodness is so stamped on your soul that nothing the enemy does can shake you from that stance, says the spirit of the living God. Amen, amen, amen. I like it. I'm liking it today. John 10, 27 and 28, Psalm 123, verse 1, Psalm 100, verse 5 are the scripture references for today. Now the prayer and the decree from the devotional Father, bring clarity to my mind and peace to my heart when the enemy attacks me. Cause the fiery targets to rebound off me and return to the wicked one's camp. I decree no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I declare every tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned, and the curse causeless shall not land. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Father, we praise you this morning. We thank you with everything in us. We thank you with everything in us. We praise you with everything in us. With everything in us, we adore you. With everything in us, with everything in us, we submit ourselves to you, O oh God. Everything we have, everything we are submitted to you, O oh God. We thank you that you are a warrior, that you are the master strategist, that you are more powerful than any demon power ever could hope to be, ever would think of being. You are the supreme God. You are the creator God. You are the God in whom we trust, in whom we put our lives. We want God to walk in such a fear of you, a fear, a reverential fear of you that we would not be tempted. It would not even cross our minds to turn our head in the direction of the wicked one. Oh God, we thank you, Lord, for insulating us. Oh God, for insulating us. Oh God, from enemy attacks, from insulating us. Oh God, from the wicked one, from ins for insulating us. Oh God, I was praying this morning. I said, Lord, why, why did this one particular circumstance work? Work out the way that it did. Sometimes it's okay to ask God why if you're looking to learn. It's not good to ask why if you just want to whine. It's not good to ask why if you just want to complain. It's not good to ask why if your motive is discontentedness because we must be content with what the Lord does or what the Lord doesn't do. We must trust him to that extent. But I said, Lord, what am I to take of that? What am I to learn of that? What am I to understand of that? What is it that I can learn from this situation that will help me walk closer to you, that will help me to understand better your will and your ways? What can I learn? And the Lord asked me a question. Now, when the Lord asks you a question, he doesn't ask it because he doesn't know the answer. He asks it to get you to ponder his ways or to get you to release a petition so that he can answer a prayer request. 
And I said, Lord, what is it I'm supposed to take away from this? Why did that happen that way? How could this be? Was it me? Was it them? Was it, what was it? And the Lord asked me a question and the Lord said, what if I'm insulating you from something? Huh? What if I'm insulating you from something? Huh? <laughs> what if I'm insulating you? I, and, and it struck me. And I said, whoa. So I go and look up the definition and insulation essentially prevents the transfer of energy and heat. In other words, there's something he doesn't want to seep into my life from being around certain ones or certain things. And sometimes God is insulating you from things. He's insulating you from enemy attacks. He's insulating you from evil issues of life that would seep into your soul. Sometimes he's insulating you from wrong alignments, even though they seem like right alignment. Sometimes he's insulating you from a storm, from a swirl that's revolving around somebody else, a, a firestorm that's about to hit something or someone and God insulates you by isolating you from it. <laughs> God insulates you. God prevents you from being part of the attack that's coming against that thing or against that place or against that person. God said, what if I'm insulating you? <laughs> I said, praise God. Praise God. I don't know what's about to happen, but I'm going to make intercession because I was insulated. And maybe I was insulated to make intercession. Maybe I was insulated for the purpose of prayer. Does it mean that God pulled me out of a thing because the thing was bad or because the person was bad or because the place was bad? Sometimes God pulls you out of a good place. He insulates you from what is going to happen so that you can be the agent of prayer to intercede. For that which he pulled you out of. I don't know if anybody's understanding me today. Some of you have been so disappointed at outcomes. So many of you have been disappointed at the way things have gone in your life. When sometimes, sometimes, sometimes God is just insulating you. God is preventing the transfer of something from that place, that thing, that person into your life. Not always because they're bad, but sometimes because they are. Not every alignment is a good alignment. Not every church is a good church. Not every job is a good job. Not every, not every, not every is a good every, every, every. So Father, thank you today that you insulate us from the things that you have chosen in this season. It's a protection. Lord, protect us. Even from our own selves, God. Sometimes we think we know what to do. Sometimes we run ahead of you. Sometimes we lag behind you. Sometimes we stand still when you're trying to get us to move. God, help us, Lord, to get in your perfect will. And if we're not in your perfect will, God, protect us, insulate us, isolate us from the storm that's coming in the place that we're not supposed to be. Pull us out of there. Pull us out of the places that we're not supposed to be in, where danger might come, where harm might come to us. God, pull us out of those places that we are not supposed to be in any longer or that we stepped into without your permission. We stepped into without your guidance. We stepped into without asking you, without inquiring of you. Oh God, we're called to lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we're supposed to acknowledge you and you direct our paths. You Order our steps, oh God. Insulate us, God, from the danger in the places that we're in. Pull us up out of these things that we're not supposed to be involved in. Pull us up out of the relationships that we are not supposed to be in. Pull us up out of the jobs that are stunting our careers. Pull us up out of the churches that are stunting our spiritual growth. Pull us up out of the places where the enemy is about to unleash an onslaught that has absolutely nothing to do with us. 
so that we don't find ourselves in the middle blindsided because we were in the wrong place at the wrong time in the wrong place at the wrong time at the wrong place at the wrong time so many people find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time people are sitting in prison because they found themselves at the wrong place at the wrong time because they did not disconnect when God said disconnect they did not move on when God said move on they went somewhere when God said do not go they walked with someone when God said get away from them oh Jesus would you insulate us so don't be so disappointed and don't be so dismayed when things don't work out be content in all things Paul said I've learned the secret to being content in all things whether I'm abasing or whether I'm abounding I've learned how to be content in all things whether I've got a lot or a little I've learned how to be content in all things and the secret is this I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Somebody's listening to me and you're disappointed because a business deal didn't go through. (laughs) Some kind of business arrangement, some kind of contractual issue, and the other person just sort of fizzled out. And you put a good bit of work into it also. You sure did. And now you're disappointed. Like, I did all that work and, and this thing just blew up. Praise God. I'm telling you, God insulated you. Thank God that it blew up now and not a year from now, two years from now. It would have been much worse. It would have been much worse. It would have been much worse. It would have been much worse if it blew up later. Thank God it blew up now. Some of you have to understand the ways of God. He loves you so much that he'll insulate you from danger. And then you're heartbroken because you've been isolated and pulled out of something when it was really his protection over you. I've learned, I've learned, I've learned, I've learned, I've learned. One thing I've learned is not to stay disappointed. I might get disappointed for a minute, but not to stay disappointed when things don't work out the way that I thought they would many times so many times so many times so many the devil and his people betraying people who were supposed to be with you people who were supposed to walk with you issues of life sometimes it really is the devil and it's so disappointing but sometimes the Lord in his grace the Lord in his mercy is insulating you He's a good, good father. He's a good shepherd. He's insulating you from the storm that's about to come. He's insulating you from the toxins that are seeping into your soul. He's insulating you financially so that you don't continue to throw good money down the drain. It's his money anyway. He doesn't want it thrown down the drain. He wants it invested in projects that will advance the kingdom. Oh, don't stay disappointed. I know it's disappointing. I know it stings when somebody makes a promise and then they back out. When you had your heart set on a certain thing and all of a sudden it doesn't go the way that you surely thought it would go. You thought you heard God. Somebody made a prophetic promise to you. They prophesied this and they prophesied that. And now all of a sudden you feel misled. You feel deceived. You feel this and you feel that. But the Lord would say to you today, let me guard you and let me protect you and stop taking things for face value and looking at things on the surface, says the Lord, for I see below the surface and I see the motives and the intentions of the hearts of man. And I see where a thing is going to go. I see the end of it from the beginning. And sometimes, says the Lord, I step in the middle and stop you dead in your tracks. I stop the force forward moving progress because it's not really forward moving progress at all says the Lord you think you're going forward but you're really going backwards when you're not in my will says the Lord so determine in your heart to look to me when things don't go the way that you thought they should because maybe just maybe they're going the way that I think they should and my way is a better way my ways are higher than your ways, says the Lord so put your trust in me and don't get disappointed don't stay disappointed if you do get disappointed but let me reappoint you because I have a better portion and a better outcome than the one you're looking at now says the Lord don't wait any longer don't waste any more time sitting there wondering but understand that I protect those whom I love just like I discipline those whom I love and I will protect you I will guard you because I am a good shepherd I will lead you beside still waters I will bring rest to your soul so trust in me and wait on me and see things the way that I see them and you will no longer walk around with disappointment and disillusionment but you will see that I have a divine connection 
a truly divine connection waiting for you in the next season. So shake it off now. Shake it off. Just shake it off, says the Lord, and walk with me. Get back up and start walking again toward that which I've called you to. And thank me that I've insulated you and protected you from the warfare and the storms and the toxins and the other issues that the enemy was trying to orchestrate for your life that I never planned for you. I pulled you up and I pulled you out, says the Lord. So thank me and praise me and know and understand that I did it for your best because I am your father and I know what is best for you, says the spirit of the living God. Ah, Sharamashi. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. Thank him. Come on, somebody. Thank him. I don't know who I'm talking to. Somebody, that was a good word. Come on. That was a good word. Come on. That was a good word. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. Do you see it? 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 That was a good word. Oh, Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That was a good word. Hallelujah. That was a good word. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now let's pray through this. This is related to that. Let's pray through this. Some of you need to learn how to put some things on the altar. The reason why I receive the revelation of insulation is because I put something on the altar. And when I put it on the altar yesterday and I sat again this morning and I asked the Lord, what am I to make of this now? I've put it on the altar. What am I to do with this now? What am I to learn from this now? That is when he gave me the word on insulation. Some of you need to learn how to put a thing on the altar, at least to be willing to put it on the altar. God might not call you to sacrifice it, but you've got to be willing to sacrifice it. God told Abraham to put his son his only son on the altar. <laughs> and Abraham was willing right up to the point that he had tied the boy to the wood and lifted up the knife. Two more seconds, Isaac would have been dead. Abraham had to be willing to put his son on the altar. God, the father was willing to put his son, Jesus, on the altar to pay the price for your sins. We have to be willing to put some of our dreams on the altar at times, to put some of our hopes on the altar at times, to, to put things on the altar that hold, that we hold dear to us sometimes. We have to be willing. We have to be willing. We have to be willing. We have to be willing to let go of those things, to put them on the altar, to sacrifice them to the Lord. Things sometimes that are very near and dear to us. We have to be willing sometimes to even put our own ministries on the altar, put our very lives on the altar. Sometimes, sometimes we've got to lay it all there and let God give back to us what he wants us to have. <laughs> Letting him decide what to burn and consume by fire and what to restore to us. Jesus submitted everything. He submitted everything. He submitted everything. Mark 14, 35 and 36. And going a little further, Jesus fell on the ground and prayed. <laughs> that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible from you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. That must be your heart stance, oh God. Make this our heart stance, God. If we're not willing, make us willing to be willing, oh God. We need to be willing to put some things on the altar in this season. Things that we thought were going to be big. Things that we thought were going to be great. Things that we thought, oh Jesus, things that we waited years and years and years for now they're in our hands and something is wrong and we don't know what it is and we don't know how to fix it and we don't hear you in prayer we have got to be willing to put a thing on the altar not my will but your will be done oh Jesus help us Lord help us Lord to be still and know that you are God to cast those cares upon you because you care for us. The altar, it's a place of worship. The altar, it's a place of sacrifice. It's a place of offering. Lord, we give you our very lives. We come to you and we say, God, we are living sacrifices. We come to your altar and we say, we don't want what you don't want. Come to that place of surrender, that place of sacrifice, that place of prayer, the place of desperate prayer. 
We need to make a divine exchange today, oh God. We need to hear your voice. We need to receive your blessing. We need more revelation, oh God. We want to grow. We want to see. We want to hear. Knowing your voice. Knowing your will. Seeing what the Father is doing. So Father, we come. Come on, some of you as a prophetic act. Just put some things on the altar. Some of you need to put that dream on the altar. Maybe, just maybe, what if, what if, what if the dream you're holding on to is not God's dream for your life? What if you've missed the last year, two, three, four, five, chasing after a dream that wasn't God's will for you? What if, what if, what if you put that on the altar and then all of a sudden a new dream came and the contentment and the satisfaction and the thrill of seeing a new thing birth overshadowed all the frustration of the past year, two, three, four. We've got to give up control. <laughs> Some of you need to put the need to control your life on the altar. He is the one who is in control. We give you the reins of our heart, God. We give you the reins of our heart, God. We give you the reins of our heart, God. We give you the reins of our heart. Give us the desires of our heart. Put your desires in our heart. Put your desires in our heart. We come to the altar and we lay our hearts bare before you, O oh God. And we say, put your desires in our heart. We don't want to walk by a carnal desire, a fleshly desire, a soulish desire, an ungodly desire, a worldly desire. We want to walk according to the desires of your heart for us because then we know that we will fulfill your will. Our prophetic destiny in hand. Oh, this is the way to break through for so many of you. This is the way to break through for so many of you. Those who put their trust in the Lord shall never be put to shame. And those who know his name and put their trust in him have not been forsaken. Those who seek his face will find him. Help us, Lord, to put it on the altar. I'm going to pray in the spirit. Some of you need to put some things on the altar. I'm going to pray in the spirit. You verbally tell the Lord what you're putting on the altar. Karama, 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 she. Oh, Ramashi, help your people, God. Help your people see what they're holding on to that's holding them back. What they've been unwilling to sacrifice that's making them miserable. Oh, Rabababa, she, Remenekete, Rebesha, E, Remenekete, 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 Rebekete, Rebarakatara, Barasha, Bababashi, Ekete, Bosha, Mashi, Etekete, Bosha, Mashi, Ekete, Bebosha, Mashi, Kete, Robobobosha, Ere. Help us, Lord, to see it, to see it and release it, to see it and release it, the stumbling block that we're carrying on our back. <laughs> He'll give you back what he wants. Sometimes when I haven't known what to put on the altar, I put everything up there. <laughs> I've put everything up there. Sometimes I was so confused about what to do, had no clue which way to go, which way to turn. And I just put it all up there. Every friend I had, every ministry, every business, every dream, every desire. I said, God, give me back what you want me to have because I don't know anymore. Some of you just need to put it up. He won't take anything that is valuable to you or according to his will. He won't. He won't destroy or consume by fire something he's put in your hands. Jesus. 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 Some of you need to go back and listen from the beginning because this has been a doozy of a breakthrough call. If you'll 
grab hold of what the Lord is saying, you'll find breakthrough, you'll find relief, you'll find release. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be still and know that he is God. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Put it on the altar. Put it, no, don't take it back off until he releases it back to you. God is good. This will be a good day to sow, guys. If you've been waiting to sow a seed, been waiting for a good day, this is a good day. It's a good day to sow a seed, I'm telling you. It's a good day to sow a seed. He's insulated so many of you from things, you have no idea the kind of warfare he's held back from you. That's how good he is. If you want to sow today, you can do that at jenniferleclair.org slash donate. jenniferleclair.org slash donate. Amen. I want to remind you of something that's just coming around the corner. The Tactical Warfare Course, Proven Strategies for Overcoming Demonic Attacks. Proven Strategies for Overcoming Demonic Attacks. Tactical Warfare. Get on the waiting list for this course. It's going to start soon. Today, you can go there and get a discount. Just click right on the banner on schoolofthespirit.tv. Tactical Warfare. Proven Strategies for Overcoming Demonic Attacks. You can get in on that right now at schoolofthespirit.tv. I want you to live in victory. I want you to understand how to deal with the demon powers that are confusing you, trying to harm you, get you out of God's will. He tempts us to go in a different direction than God's leading us. It's called tactical warfare. It's coming soon. You can get on that early. Go get signed up at schoolofthespirit.tv. Also, a couple of other things I want to remind you of in the realm of prayer. First, I want to remind you one last time that we will be in Jacksonville on Tuesday. It's a week from today. We are almost sold out. We are almost sold out. Don't keep waiting till the last minute, guys. A lot of people in Boston couldn't get in because we sold out. And they were, some of them were very angry with me. And I said, guys, <laughs> I only can seat so many people. I rented a facility and that's all I can do. I can't break the rules. You got to sign up early. Amen. Jacksonville, Atlanta, Nashville. Don't ask me where it is. Go to jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com and see for yourself where it is. All of these are almost sold out. They're on the verge of sellout. We've got a week. Tuesday's Jacksonville. Wednesday's Atlanta. Thursday is Nashville. They're almost sold out. It's the SEER Activation Tour. And you can get in on that. Jacksonville and Nashville. Other cities I'll be. Oklahoma City, San Antonio. That's almost already sold out. Charlotte, Pittsburgh. These are coming up. Get involved in that if it's going to bless you. But don't wait till the last. This is the last minute, guys. It's absolutely the last minute. So go get signed up. You want to uh, donate, jenniferleclair.org slash donate. Someone's saying, what is Cash App? Uh, Cash App is dollar sign, Jennifer Leclaire, capital J, capital L, capital C. PayPal, paypal.me slash Jennifer Leclaire, paypal.me slash Jennifer Leclaire. Uh, the Venmo is at Jennifer Leclaire. Venmo is at Jennifer Leclaire. The text to give is 754 701 2161, text the word pray to 754 701 2161, text the word pray. And the P.O. Box is P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida 33303. You can find all of that at jenniferleclair.org slash donate. So God is good. So the, the tactical warfare that's starting soon, you can get on that now with a discount. You can also on Sunday, I'm going to be teaching at, listen, listen very closely, as part of the school of prayer and intercession. I'm going to be teaching on understanding and avoiding witchcraft prayers. And boy, do I have a revelation on this. So go get involved in the school of prayer and intercession. If that uh, interests you, I hear so many Christians praying witchcraft prayers. Now, God doesn't hear those prayers, but the enemy does. And then he seeks to execute those things. You're releasing, some of you are releasing witchcraft against yourself. You're releasing witchcraft against others. Some people are releasing witchcraft potentially against you. Go to schoolofthespirit.tv, guys. Get involved in these courses. Invest in yourself. Learn and grow in the spirit. Amen. If you eat the same food all the time, you can kind of get tired of it. Get involved in something different. Schoolofthespirit.tv. This is School of Prayer and Intercession. You can just take that one course. You can sign up for the vault. You can, uh, you know, do, 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 do the monthly program. You can do whatever you want. Amen. You're free. There's lots of stuff there for you. Walking in the spirit is there. School deliverance is there. 
oh man, it just goes on and on and on. We have something new pretty soon. It's going to really bless you. See your activation challenge. I'm getting testimonies from all over the world. All this is at school of the spirit TV transform is there as well. And then the praying in the prodigals. I'll be sending an email out on some of this stuff today, the prayer and spiritual warfare events. I'll be sending an email out today. So make sure on my email list at jenniferleclair.org, jenniferleclair.org. But on March the 27th, we're having a compassionate prayer event called Setting the Prodigals Free. And I'm going to pray with you. I had a word of knowledge when I was in Israel about prodigals coming home. And uh, on that trip, we saw one prodigal come home. And then when we got home, someone else on the trip saw another prodigal come back. It's a season for it. I want to teach you how to stand in prayer and how to not grow weary when praying for prodigals. Now, that could be a prodigal family member. It doesn't have to be a child. It could be a sister. Uh, could be uh, a, a friend that you know has gone away from the Lord. If you want to watch it online, you can go to ahop.tv. If you want to watch it online, you can go to ahop.tv. If you want to come to South Florida in person, you can do that. JenniferLeclair.eventbrite.com. The Eventbrite won't get you access online, so don't sign up there. Don't sign up there. Ahop, A-H-O-P dot TV, A-H-O-P dot TV. Amen. Prophecy rooms and healing rooms in English and Spanish every Friday night at Awakening House of Prayer in Fort Lauderdale. GlobalPropheticCenter.com, the prophetic voices. It's all there. Make sure you open in these emails, guys. God is good. Make sure you get on the email list, guys. JenniferLeclair.org. Make sure or text the word prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T. Text the word prophet to 555-888. All right, God bless you guys. I gotta go. I've got a full schedule of exciting, fun things I've got to do today. So bless you. I'll be back with you later. Have a great day.